All right then. One of those rumors we've heard about for quite a while now has just become extra official. And I've got to say, this reference AMD 6900 XT liquid cooled edition is really smartly designed. It's not too thick, it's not too long, and I love that they put the liquid cooling tubes near the back of it. If you look at the way my case is designed, for example, this will make it really easy to put that 120 millimeter. Uh, radiator on the back of it, which I think most people do with at least one radiator. It's put on the, you know, outtake fan on the back. And putting that near the back of the card is just, it's just good design. A good design for system integrators in pre-built systems, wouldn't you say? Anyways, we'll get to that in a second. It is fun to see AMD finally using that 18 gigabit per second memory that's been lying around from Samsung for years and that I was told and said in my, you know, big RDNA 2 leak, AMD was considering using but not sure if they would use it in the flagship right away. I'm glad to see it finally out there. Although I have to say that I would only expect these higher clocks and bandwidth to give you about... I don't know, something about 7 to 11% more performance, really at most, to the base 6900 XT. I really don't see this being some big 15% uplift. You know, RDNA 2 doesn't actually benefit as much from bandwidth increases as previous AMD architectures or, of course, Ampere. Infinity Cache was put there to make this less of a factor to alleviate the need for raw bandwidth. So this should improve performance a decent amount, but I don't think by as much as some people might expect. And either way, though, this should still be enough of an increase in performance to beat the 3080 Ti firmly. And in fact, the 3090 is likely going to be firmly beaten as well, possibly even in 4K. This thing will be a flagship product. So, when can you buy it? Well, honestly, the rollout of this card is coming off to me as a bit murky and not really for do-it-yourself gamers. At the very least, for my talks with distributors, this thing is definitely not just like right around the corner for the do-it-yourself market. And in fact, I'm specifically being told that this is something probably built to win over relationships with OEMs and system integrators, pre-builds, right? Some of these reference liquid cool models could show up on Newegg, but it'll be very limited volume at first, and that is not what AMD is trying to do here. And honestly, this kind of makes sense. Offering an RTX 3080 Ti 3090 alternative, one that is firmly stronger and has more reasonable power supply requirements. I know it's 330 watts, but guys, that's a lot better than what OEMs are having to deal with for the 3080 Ti and 3090. Trust me, this is much more manageable for their designs. And also being able to fit into tighter OEM cases, yeah, that's what this is for. The current do-it-yourself market is a knife fight right now. Everything sells. And if I was AMD, I would just keep supplying whatever I can supply to the do-it-yourself that I'm already supplying while trying to put the extra effort into maintaining relationships, again, with pre-builds, with the people who do pre-builds. Because once availability starts getting better, you got to make sure your relationship is good so they push your products and their flagship systems. And... They can't get a hold of like any 3080s right now. So if AMD offers a better alternative, again, with more reasonable uh, power consumption requirements and the ability to be neatly fit into tighter cases, it is a big win for them, a big win for their relationships with OEMs. However, I will say that I am hearing that AIBs are working on what I'm actually going to call 18 gigabit per second models themselves. But it doesn't sound like they're coming right away, and I don't think a lot of them will be based on the reference model design. And because there's no reference model being sold directly from AMD's website right now, they'll, of course, have incredibly inflated prices. So I guess in conclusion, this 6900 XT Liquid Cooled Edition that no one was really sure would ever come out is coming out, but it is meant to be an alternative to the 3080 Ti and 3090 for pre built during late summer. And hey, look, though, maybe officially they will launch it directly before the holiday season. Maybe for people looking to build PCs for Battlefield 2042. But right now, honestly, guys, I got to say this. Think about it. If AMD were to start selling this directly from their website, then there's an MSRP 
and MSRP markups from AIBs that people will complain about. And I see no reason, no upside for AMD to deal with that right now. Supply should start getting better later in this year. And that's probably when AMD would consider officially launching this with an official MSRP to consumers from their website. But that's not right now. It's for system integrators. And so, yeah, I guess that's really all there is to say about this video. I did some digging. I thought I had some interesting information. And so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this informs you. And if you did, you know, remember, please subscribe to the Moore's Law Z YouTube channel. Ring the bell button. Share this video. Watch my other videos. My God, guys, that Raptor Lake leak that I just put out, that's a huge deal. And remember that if you have the extra money, there's a big community waiting for you. You'll get access to a Discord. You can talk to me, submit questions for Broken Silicon and upcoming guests, and get exclusive podcasts like Die Shrink, one that's coming out this Friday. And as always, the other thing left to say is thank you for watching. <laughs>